Yo, yo, we back with another one, and another one, and another one, man. This is where we're all thinking podcast stories behind the craft. As y'all can see, we're doing it a little bit different today. You know, I'm always about evolution and growing, and I ain't going to lie, I kind of got born sin like, one-on-one with somebody. I kind of wanted to add more to the table for you guys and have y'all enjoy more than just me just talking to somebody else, have two perspectives on the topic or whatever the case may be. And these people that sit next to me right now, they some of the greatest people that I've met throughout my journey. Um, they give me a lot of great advice. They hold me accountable. Um, and they just overall good people. And they're regulars on this podcast. So without further ado, man, go ahead and introduce yourself. I don't know who want to go first. Uh, live, checking in live from the west side, Ladro Cartel. Okay. Yeah, you know, be more owner and operator of X Line Denim. All right. Shout out. To, I don't know why they always, when we get on camera, they want to act all shy and shit. But um, we got to give our flowers with flowers, dude. Cartel just dropped the amazing project, top to bottom. Uh, he probably tired of me saying it. I've been calling him like then <laughs> every other day, telling him how great of a project um he's had. Um, and what he brought to the table, because he had us waiting for a little minute. He talked about it last time. He came and sat down with us, and now it's finally here. X line, always outside, doing her thing. Um, so, what's new for y'all? What y'all got going other than what y'all already doing? I appreciate that on the album. For you sure. You feel me? Because it took us some time on that motherfucker. For sure, for sure. Definitely. Uh, we just been working, man. Bimo was Bimo was talking about like, yo, hey, what we doing? Like, what podcast? Like, what we doing? What we we getting active? What's up? We supposed to be out here on social media? What's up? We hanging? And I was like, she was doing a little list of like who we fuck with, and of course, you know what we all thinking podcast popped up at the top. So for sure, it was just like we got to get busy with you. Definitely. What about you, big boss, shot caller? No, I you know I just chill. Um. You know, just working, creating, just putting my hand in whatever I can put my hand in. I feel that. So, as y'all know, we got a lot of things that's been going around, a lot of motion, a lot of things that's been derailing the city. Because everybody already know who you guys are, for the most part. And when y'all speak, y'all speak volumes. And nobody has really sat down with both of y'all at the same time. That's why I was like, I got to be the first one to do this. Yeah, that's lit. You're right. You probably you is the first one. To I know I'm the first one. I do my homework. You know what I'm saying? Tell Soldier Boy that. Ah. Uh, <laughs> first rapper to get be more drone here at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we done been in the same room with each other. Yeah. But that's crazy. I ain't never thought about that. Yeah. So when when you came to me with the idea this morning, what well, today, I was like, yeah, I might as well just sit down with both of y'all because when y'all talk, people listen. Right. Y'all words hold a lot of weight, especially for the work y'all put in and the things y'all do. So, and y'all opinion from y'all perspective, because Cartel, you don't really talk much, but when you do, it speaks volumes. And when you talk, everybody listen. So, in y'all perspective, how y'all feel about the city and its direction is going in right now? Man, I feel like the city is exactly what it say on the Orlando sign. Beautiful. It's going <laughs> crazy. Uh I'm enjoying the music scene right now. Like, I'm enjoying what we coming to as a culture. Like, I feel like we at a point to where people recognizing it's okay to be themselves and like really pay attention and, and put a focus in their craft. Like, first for a change, because you know it's been a lot of like dick riding and. You know, just like behind the scenes, like stuff that go on that that the city ain't really about. You know what I mean? So I feel like we we really giving ourselves a chance to put our passion first. Like artists is really being themselves out there, and I feel like it's a pivotal time. For sure, be more. Um, I feel like it's going in a good good direction. I feel like more artists are understanding that they can pave their own path. That there's no there's nobody with one a key 
there's nobody to determine where you're going. You Ain't can no go gatekeeper. You, you can go your own path on how you want to do things the way you want to do it. And I think more artists are realizing that and um like are waking up and doing what they got to do to achieve their dream. I feel that because, like I said, I'm always an advocate for um the independent. I'm always an advocate for the city. I don't really feel like how they were saying the city was dry at a point or whatever. I never felt that. I always felt like everybody had their own way. Everybody had their own way of doing things. It's just taking a little bit of time. Because I'm, I'm an advocate just as well as you are for Nia Dene and what she got going on. Right. Because I felt like, especially what she did, she did exactly what people said to do. Market, get her things going. How you feel about that when people say she still ain't really knocking I down the like, door? I feel like Nia Dene is... Inadvertently, they try like I'm not gonna say on purpose, but I just feel like in this in in their own form of fashion, the Orlando nightlife be about trying to blackball her. Why I say that because you know she has been one of the hottest rappers in Orlando for a minute. And being like, snapping. there's no doubt about Y'all it. Y'all been snapping. But you know because she doesn't move exactly the way they say that she should move. You know I feel like a lot of times she's been overlooked when she should have been in the. She should have been in the conversation. Mm. She should have been in the conversation. I I feel like now it's like one of those things where now you don't have a choice. Or you're going to look like a hater. Yeah, because she in that motherfucker. You're I'm going sorry. to look like a hater <laughs> if you're not like trying to do what you can to help take Nia Dene where she already is. But you know what I'm saying? Over the top, you're going to look like a hater because it's like, why? Yeah. Because she, she won't pay you $300. Why? Because she don't... Like, why? Like, there's, like, no reason. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like she just showed everybody, like, if you just be consistent and do your do it your way, you don't have to, like... You can pop regardless. You can pop regardless. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come to a point where people don't have no choice. Yeah. They don't have a choice. Or they're going to look like haters. <laughs> like, you don't have a choice. Like, at this point... What can you say? You don't have a choice but to get behind Naya Dene. I feel that. Well, I don't feel like it's a choice. And I, that's why I feel like she worked hard enough to show people that they didn't have a choice. I feel that. And what what you think she did other than stay consistent to make that decision to where it needed to be like that? Well, she was she's a good she's a good rapper in general. Like, you know, she's a good artist. She developed herself. She was in the studio a lot. Like, she dropped a lot of music. Mm-hmm. She dropped a lot of music. Um mm-hmm. She did, you know. She she was blessed with um, being a part of Jug House, so I'm pretty sure she had a lot of different resources. Cause I know she did a lot of features with a lot of different artists coming out of Orlando that already like Bubble, like Lil Tyler, like you know what I'm saying, like mm-hmm. all these artists that she ended up getting features with before they blew. So I'm pretty sure that helped. Like, and she just kept being consistent, kept dropping those car freestyles that went crazy. Her trillers went crazy, like. And she just kept finding, yeah, content. And she just kept working and finding her way and figuring it out. Until she was like, oh, boom, press. Oh, y'all like when I say stuff like this? Okay, boom, finna run it again. Latex, uh, uh, let me just keep going. And she can just, and she understands it more than most artists. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Being so young, she understands, like, boom, once you find your formula, you just keep hitting the formula in the head. Keep smacking with it. Yeah. I think that's the best thing, cause that's why I be trying to tell people like you. They always say it in the um in videos, but people don't execute. I think that's the biggest thing. Like execution be the biggest thing right, for right. a lot of people. It's like you gotta understand like once you find your niche and what you do, it's like like even in your case, you know what works for you for how you works like with the stickers and Fresh. stuff like that. You know that works for you. That will help you do what you gotta do. Yeah. So. A lot of people say you leave a lasting impression on people without your music. So what does that entail? Like, you just being you or some that you worked with marketing, things of that nature? Like, I, I mean, initially it's just me being me. There's, I mean, marketing probably like underlined somewhere in there because I'm always studying. I'm always watching the greats. But I feel like initially it's just me being me, man. I just be honestly trying to be as genuine as I can and approach every situation with with just that hunger, like humility, being humble at the same time, and just trying to like approach everything hungry though. Like we could do this shit, we could do that. Like whatever it is, we could do it. I right, bet who it ain't no gatekeepers. Like we could do whatever we want to do out here. 
you know, if we want to drop the project, if I want to go get, you know, yay producer, if I want to go, you know, grab them boys, if I want to go grab Mick, count, like, you know what I'm saying, and put everybody in the same room, you know, if we got to book the B&B, we got to make a producer camp our damn self this weekend, is what we're going to do, you know, and we're going to make it, we're going to push it. So, like, I feel like it's just me being me. I ain't really got no plan. Uh, I don't be waking up like, yo, I got to act like this today. Uh, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't be knowing. I be freestyling, bro. I be just trying to make it happen and be genuine about it, though. If I ever feel myself, like, leaning towards, like, a point where, you know, I feel like it's just not me, I be quick to back off. You know what I mean? Like, hold up, regroup. What you really want out of this? I right, do this. I, I move forward. You know what I'm saying? So it just be me being me. Definitely. So now, your project. I want to get into that a little bit. So you say you got the A side. We waiting for the B side. We're going to touch on that after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B so, side, B side coming soon. You got Crush Young, Middle of the Trenches, Boom Pap, Ice Spice, all them great tracks that I love. So what was the process like throughout that whole process for you? How did it feel? How did it make you feel like going through that process and naming it what you named it? All right, look, I got a question for you before I answer that question. <laughs> you say, question, Boom Pap and Ice Spice. That's and your, middle of the trenches. Your top three? Middle of your top four? Okay, so I don't like doing, I, I feel like, because at first, remember I told you Middle of the Trenches was my favorite. Okay. Right. But. Kept listening. I kept I, I kept list I was listening to it on the way here. And I just Chris Young like resonates with me a lot more. Okay, okay, okay. And it's like it especially like in my situation what I'm going through right now, especially I gotta get up early in the morning. Yeah. I could turn that on in my headphones while I'm riding to work and I could just vibe. You feel and it puts you in a good space to do what you got. Middle of the trenches is still that, but it's like when I'm working out, I wanna hear that. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? It's like speaking to you. Yeah, like, speaking to me. Yeah. So it's like that's why when I be telling people to listen to the project, I'm like, that's real rap. Like, right. if you want to hear some real lyricists, go listen to that real quick. It's a short and sweet. You ain't give us nothing long and drawn out. Yeah, man, you give us some short. Yeah, some short and sweet. So, yeah, I those are my those my top boy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what's up though. I, I, I appreciate that though. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Because yeah. I'm like, hold up, is my boy giving his list right now? Is this your? Got to make this a moment. He just made the list. <laughs> nah, I ain't, I ain't making no so list. It's just those the ones like those. When those come on, I already know because, you know, Apple Music be creating stuff. Yeah. So it created like me a, um, what is mm -hmm. it called? Yeah, it's like a heavy rotation playlist. Yeah. And like the whole album was in that bit. So it's like <laughs> I got to listen to it out of order. Yeah. So it'll, it'll go from my Youngin' Days to my Raw Wave yeah. to my Ken Carson, then the Cartel. Yeah. And then they'll go to other SOB artists that yeah. I had. So it's like, I got to keep hearing it over and over. Right, fast. Right. Especially me going to work, coming home. So it's like, different things like that. Yeah, so that's the I already have no list, great. per se, but I feel like Middle of Treasure Question Young is like my two top favorites. That's what's up, man. Because those are two of my favorite songs, too. Definitely. I'm going to fuck up by, uh, by Question Young. Yeah. So what's the question you asked me again? Put me on, <laughs> on game because I spent it off. I spent it off. You feel I me? Said, I just wanted to do how it. does it feel that now the project is out? Mm -hmm. And what was the process like going through that and doing what you do? I mean, uh, I feel good about it. I'm just coming to grips with like receiving feedback. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, like every artist, you know, we are artists at the end of the day, and, and we be nervous about our shit. You know, we be trying to see if it's going to hit a certain way, you know, if, what type of responses we going to get from people. We be looking at that. We pay attention to it. And, and like, the response was so dope. Like, the response that the world been giving me since then, you know what I mean? Like, just been giving me crazy-ass responses. I done had 50 different DMs from different people. And shout out to everybody who hit me up, like, and reach out and gave me, uh, you know, like, guidance with the project as well you mm -hmm. feel me because like it took some shit for us to get it done we had to reach in the vault we had to go find stuff like cause some of these projects yeah we <laughs> you know we had to get clearances you know what i mean it was a lot of shit going on you know that i ain't know i was gonna run into but it's you know lessons learned stuff that we needed to go through because we independent and this will be out here doing this will be out here preaching but uh it was a process like a mug man but we put that shit together i feel like me getting the responses from everybody I've heard from thus far is like really touching though, like on some fly shit. It really put me in a headspace where I was like, damn, did I just, 
did I just drop a classic? I'm like, yeah. Right. Like, the, <laughs> like, 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 am I like, from the I'm city? Like, did I just drop no a classic skip, in the city? I say, bro, you don't have no skip. Yeah, you don't. Hey, this is side A. Just wait till you hear side B, dog. Like, I yeah. feel no like, skips. especially like what I've been listening to, because I've been in my rager space for right now. Like, my, my Destroy Lonely, Ken Carson, Ian, Lil Yachty type yeah. of vibe. But when you came out with that, it kind of took me away from that, back to the rap and yeah. the, back in the days like the 2000s type of vibe yeah, like it just it just because i'm the type of person like i always tell people especially like my producer friends i like samples or mm -hmm. like when you when when this person sings in the beginning of a song mm -hmm. i love that that yeah, just gives me like a wholesome vibe like i don't know it just makes yeah me feel when it good. come on vibe and yeah when it give you something to rock to like as soon as it come yeah. on yeah just like when like rollo did the set me free that beginning part before he comes on it's just like Oh, we here now, yeah. type yeah. of vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. So, when we get some visuals, so the crazy thing is, bro, as I shot some visuals, we have visuals in the clutch. They finna come out in the next couple weeks, bro. We dropping. Uh, it got pushed. It got pushed aside because we was working on certain order for the project, and it didn't end up coming out nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So. I had this whole vision of where it was gonna be like this many songs and on the first project, this many on the second one, and it was gonna be exactly one through however many, and then it didn't come out like that. Like song number thirteen was done first. You know what I mean? Like and the mastering process was kinda of tedious because we was pulling projects out of like thin air. Like we was literally like, Man, damn, we need to we need to run this back, bro. You remember Drew, y'all remember that one shit, bro? Throw this in the mix, bro. You know? And cause we listening, trying to see what's fire. We make a hundred songs to pick fourteen. You know what I mean? So uh, we we thumbing through records and, and niggas is like, yo, put this in there. I right, bet, yeah, that's fine, that can go. And then, you know, two weeks later it don't make the cut. When when we get on the board with Wyatt and Mick and Count and everybody and we here and we checking everything out like time and time again certain records is just like saying that they ain't gonna fit the bill and they ain't really gonna like fit in with the project so certain shit didn't make the cut bro it was crazy it was a lot of shit it was a lot of shit to deal with but B side it's gonna be worth it you feel what me and like and the whole project itself just like the whole project was like. It was some shit for me. I just wanted to be able to be myself, nigga, in a space, in a creative space of the city where we getting popping right now. And everybody, like, on that independent shit, like, that's what's up. I hope they really own that. Because I'm really on that. Like, so, this what I'm about. Like, I'm down when niggas go to talking about everybody doing their thing in the city and whoop de whoop And, like, yeah, we all out here showing our independence and showing how we working. We really doing it behind the scenes. So, the, this project is going to embody all of that shit. B side is is gonna be like I'm excited to hear it. So, you know, you know like I said when when I first heard a project, Middle of Trenches was like that song that I was like, yeah, that's the one. Cause I felt like you addressed a lot of stuff without addressing it in a way, and you made it you made it be known that from you not speaking, you you see everything in your space and what you do. So when you made that track, how was you feeling? What was your mindset going into that track? Uh, Cause you said a lot of powerful things. Middle of the Trenches? Yeah. Uh, man, Middle of the Trenches is crazy. It was like a remix to a Drake and 21 Savage uh, mm. beat. Um, I forget the name of the song. Middle oh, of the Ocean. Middle of the Ocean, yeah. Middle of the Ocean. And I wanted to rap on the beat after, after 21 and Drew is killed. And I'm like, man, God damn, bro, them boys... Them boys snap. You feel me? I'm like, damn, let me... Let me I want to get on the... And then I initially, like... Freestyled a little rough copy of some shit, you know, just over that beat. And then it turned into me, like my brother being like, yo, that's so fire, bro. Like, you can't dare, like, you can't, you can't beat. play like this with they beat. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Like, that's too raw for that. Like, you need your own shit. And then I was in the studio with Mickey and we was thumbing through some records, uh, Wyatt, and we was at Vivid Studios thumbing through records. And then I heard like a sample with the homie Wyatt singing on it. And Wyatt was like snapping in the background, and then before you know it, like Mick was on it, Countdown was on it, like, and these are all my favorite people to create with. So mm -hmm. it was crazy because I, I automatically just like went in and killed it, and just it was that. And I was like, yeah, bro, we gonna. And then Trap Hamilton was with me. See, like we got the we got the remix on the way. It's finna drop. Me, Trap Hamilton, and I am froze. Mm. HKN froze. You feel me? That's so lit. that's the original. That's the original original. But it like like I say, hundred songs to make fourteen 
fit process, cut. You know what process, I'm saying? It's process, process crazy. That's important. That's yeah. important when uh, uh, artists create. Because I know a lot of times because of um, budgets, like a lot of times a lot of artists just make one song and then be like, oh, okay, let me get this. Let me make sure the video. And then it's like the song doesn't do nothing for them. And it's like now you're... You 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 went to, from here to here because your expectations of this song that you created. You put all your. It wasn't energy, what you thought it was. Yeah. It wasn't put. It wasn't what you thought it was. So, but it's what you need to do is create ten. I mean, ten, fifty, a hundred songs so you yeah. can thumb through all these all this music and you can pick out what's best for you. Yeah. Because you know you can't go in there like I don't know why. Trust the practice yeah, so you can I, trust the process. Yeah, like, yeah, you got to like, trust the practice, though. You can't though. go in there and make one. You, nobody's baby face, bro. Babe, like, come on, bro. Like, we're not baby face out here, yeah. bro. Like, you're not going in there making the number come one on, hit, man. bro. Like, it's not happening. It don't happen It's like not that. happening, like, at all. Like You don't think, you don't think somebody's going in there? People can. Yeah. I feel I'm like anybody can do can, it. But, it, but I'm saying it takes practice. no method practice. to that. Yeah. It takes practice. It, it takes, you know, maybe 30, 40 songs in. Like you can just imagine how many songs Future got recorded that's unreleased. How many songs Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne got recorded yeah. that's not released? Like it happens. Mm -hmm. But you have to get in. You have to get in your box. You have to. Get you got to practice, man. Uh, you got to get in yeah, there. Yeah. You got to rhythm and you got to you practice on flows, different beats, different sounds, different different ways to rap. Like you know, I was watching um, the rise of Boss Man D'Lo and he went through like. Four or five flows. Yeah, man. I heard, bro. Before earlier he flows, he was right. snapping too, though. Like, yeah. Before he got it right, before he found his formula. Shout and now, now he just hitting it on hitch. Yeah. They're like, he sound the same, so it works. Yeah. It works. <laughs> it really it flies on Lizzo, well. baby. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now he got that bitch swinging. Because <laughs> when he was, when he was, when he had those other flows, nobody cared. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't even remember the other flows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I seen that too. That it was going viral for a little minute. Yeah, like, man, had like I, three, four, five flaws. Bro, I watch Young Thugs like turn around too. It's crazy. You know what I mean? To see Thug like with big, super long shorts, Jabos, like you know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. like that look, that earlier on look, earlier on sound to like see him full on transition. Same thing with Lil Baby. Same thing with One. You know what I mean? Like I done watched. I mean, one kind of with the same from the beginning to the end, like, right. like you know what I mean. From then to now, I feel like, bro, is, bro, kind of like he's so tough though. Yeah, he's he so raw with hell. Yeah, yeah, can't CBFW man, can't, <laughs> can't be, be fucked with, with man. One, 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 man, for sure, for sure. But I'm just relating this to their sounds, you know what I mean, along the way, and being able to view that and be like, damn, like, did you hear bro back then? Like, if you hear me back then, you would, you would be like, this man drove crazy, man. <laughs> but I see, I see, you kind of like singing a little bit, kind of, yeah, and that's come from going yeah. in the studio a thousand times, yeah. practicing. I've been getting, getting comfortable, getting, and not only with going my voice, studio, getting people who are actually really creative in the studio with you. Yeah, like he has a, a, a engineer named Wyatt. Who, yeah. who pushes him and, and, and he's my vocal coach vocal and my engineer. Coach. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Makes him do so different do. things. Like, yeah. yo, you sound good doing this. Do that. Do this. Yeah. Do that. Do this. Not somebody who just gonna go in there and just press the button. Yeah. Mm. Push the goddamn button. Press the button. <laughs> yeah. Go back. Go back. You know, that's like, go back. Go back. Start it over from the top. Yeah, yeah, push a button. Yeah, no, nah. no, 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 I'm stop. with people Wait, who stop. care Hold about on. the craft. Yeah, like he, um, he's in there. I'm starting to spend way more time. All That's that what matters. this album like taught me. This yeah. album taught me to be myself. And like, and as hard as that, I mean, as easy as that sounds, like be yourself. You would think that people would get that on the first try. Like, you really got to do some deep down thinking, so like on on what you like as a person, as a human being, and who you want to be around. When you like it, what you get what, what I'm exactly saying? Exactly. What are you trying to give out to the public on who you are at, for your yeah? Art? How it represents like, you. What are you trying to represent? What yeah. are you trying to say? What are you? You know what I'm saying? And getting people the right people in the studio to help you encompass that, yeah. like help you put that sound together, and don't care about like how you look while you're doing it, or if it's lame or not, if or up here if or you yeah, like like if you famous or if you just like oh you don't got no placements placements or you got a bunch of placements, like it don't matter. You know I work with some people who got some of the craziest placements in the industry, like right now that go crazy, bro. Like platinums on platinums, goals on goals. You know what I mean? And we all humble, like we just be working because we genuinely like the sound that Ladro been creating, and we trying to put that in. We trying to make that something, you know what I mean? And that's what this album taught me: trust the process, and also like trust who you bring into the process to be their whole self. You know what I mean? Because if I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make middle of the trenches, you know what I mean? I need, I need, 
I, I need Trap Hamilton to come be Trap. You know what I mean? I need Froze to come be Froze. And I'm trusting that they going to be them people when they get in the booth. Right. You know what I mean? I'm trusting that Wyatt going to do what he's supposed to do when he hear me singing a certain note and he like, yo, bro, this shit is fire. Like, I'm trusting he going to be like, yo, Dro, go do that again. How about just freestyle like that? Do that right there and just go for eight bars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then I'm back in there. Now here go. Here's uh, right to this. What's the name of that song? Here's uh, song number two. Um, oh, uh, non sample. Here's non sample. You know what I mean? Like freestyle off the top of the dome because Mickey's like that sounded fire. Go do that for like this part and just see what happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trusting that. And Trusting and, all of and, that shit, and, bro. And like I said, recording a lot, cutting and pasting, taking yeah. some parts here, putting it there. Yeah. Putting, not taking, being afraid for yeah, somebody to tell bar, me that don't down. sound good. You should put this yeah, over here instead. Over Use here. these bars. He was like, just, I'm he with was just that. saying Middle of the Trenches was the original and then it became a remix. That song went through like five versions. Different versions yeah, facts. Before he bro. got to this, the version that's on the album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, That'd be crazy when I hear stuff like that. Because yeah. uh, I think it was Mick. Mick came in here was like, he made five versions of one song. Yeah. And they all might sound alike to us, but to him. To him, it's, it's like different. screeching in yeah. his head. Like like chalk, like nails on a chalkboard, bruh. In his head to certain versions because he's probably like, ah, I can hear that. Like I can hear where I fucked up or I can hear where it wasn't supposed to be like that because the first two times we did it this way and then that one track sat different when bro bounced it out. So like this, the number three is really supposed to be the right one, but nigga, at the end, them second number 146, it sound like this instead of this. <laughs> like, bro, we be going through it in our heads and it's a tedious ass process. So you have to trust it, you know, and you got to trust the people that's with you. And if you do a good job and and land a classic, like, I'm so humbled by, like, niggas just telling me how much of a classic and how much is just, like, day-to-day -day in their lives. I'm just like, damn, that's crazy to fuck around and do it when I wasn't even trying to do it. Like, it be I went, like that sometimes. All, all these times we've been learning these methods. Like, I done been around everybody in the game, bro. I done been around everybody's favorite rapper from Orlando. For like, sure. either in the streets, like, in the neighborhoods, uh, like, on the set, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or in the studio. And it's crazy just to be like, I wasn't even trying to do nothing. Nobody showed me. I was just taking everything I know and just going for it. You know what I mean? Just making music with the people that I like to make music with. Mm -hmm. And that's how it came out. You know what I'm saying? So, like, And that's how music been coming out. I got a question me. for both of y'all. So, because this is something that I face. And I like to, when, when, I, when I think of stuff like this, I like to bring it here. Because I want to see if either you feeling the same way I'm feeling or you probably got a different perspective on certain things. So mm -hmm. it's like, do you ever feel pressure in your niches? Like you being an artist and you being a, a brand, on your own brand of making it to a certain level or making a certain amount of money. Do y'all feel that type of pressure? Because sometimes I feel it. You feel what I'm saying? Especially what I'm doing. I'm like, I want to be the best. I want to be the best in my city first before I go anywhere else and take it over from there. I feel like the pressure, I mean, you want, you want me to? Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like we all feel that pressure. We all feel a, sen a sense of pressure out here, a societal pressure that's been placed on right, our shoulders, right. you know, because of what everybody else is doing on social media. I feel like that right there is a pressure that you can't run from, you know what I mean? But it's how you handle it, you know what I'm saying? I take it well because you can't pressure me into shit that ain't for me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't really got no pressure at the end of the day. I just be out here trying to, Make the bread to do what I love to do. Because I'm going to be doing it for free. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love rap. I'm going to be somewhere rapping, bro. You can ask anybody who know me from the chain gang to the streets. Like They'll be like, man, this man Montana was up the road in the corner beating on the door. A thousand inmates out here on the wreck yard. We, <laughs> You know what I mean? This is mm -hmm. what we do. This is what I'm going to be doing for free. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just out here. The pressure is to get the bread. Excuse me. The pressure to get the bread. Then I could use the bread to put behind my passion, what I really love to do. You know what I'm saying? A couple couple throws, you're going to strike at that anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of them going to be a strike. It's cool that you got to keep doing that. You feel me? But I ain't doing it because, oh, such such them just drop, man. I'm looking on Instagram, bro, and all these boys just drop right now. I got to drop and make it look like this. Hell no. Like, right, right. <laughs> ain't no pressure. No, <laughs> ain't no pressure, what, bro. Right. This is what we're going to be doing in the garage for right. free. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were somewhere sitting in the garage, bro, with a whole bunch of different instruments and different producers sitting around. Like, we kicking these dope gems for free. 
You know what I'm saying? And you mm-hmm. can't buy this. So you can't really pressure me into thinking I'm supposed to be at a certain point at a certain time because, like, everybody hit their strike. Everybody ain't hit, I mean, hit their stride at different times. Nipsey hit at a certain point. Like, I had been listening to Nip since 09. Right. Like, I'm, niggas I, wasn't hip to Nip till super late. I was, I was hip to him. I was one of the ones that caught yeah. on late because I felt I'm like, like I, said, I, said it, I said it before, like, I felt like the world was hiding him. Yeah. Like, on bef- purpose. Before he died, like, and then when he died, that's when all clips was coming out. People talking about You couldn't about hide him. him no more because he, at this point, he done achieved Probably. the level, of, he, that level of prolificness. Like, on is prolificness a word? Who cares? We just made it one. He <laughs> achieved that level of, like, prolificness, like, Pac, nigga. Like, there was, there was that level, that threshold, like, Pac and Big and, and Nas and Jay-Z. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He just popped, like, this man was 33, bro. Like, and he hit, I mean, of course, these guys was younger when they died. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, he was 33, like, here with us. Normal person, bro, like, and always been that guy. Jay-Z and them been seeing them. I'm going to buy a thousand copies of this for a hundred. That's a hundred? I'm going to buy a thousand of them. Like, let me get that. Like, niggas been knew he was him. You know what I'm saying? And I've been listening to Breast since, like, 09. Since him and Drizzy on that. I'm a motherfucking killer. Like, I just thought that was so dope. All that shit. Before rap, my last name was my lifestyle. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a skinny nigga with, with hair. So, like, I'm fucked <laughs> up by Nipsey, Bone Thugs, Snoop Dogg, all the people who look and act like me. Like, I love that shit, too. You feel me? So, look at look at what, look at what bro was doing. Like, how prolific that shit was, bro. Yeah, like, I don't think... It's like pressure to do what? Like... It's like what I what am I pressured to do to be the best? I don't care about being the best in, in clothes, bro. Like that don't that's not <laughs> my t shirt better than yours. Yeah, like what? <laughs> what are we talking about? I'm like Renardo Green. I rock G Man. Shout out to number thirty one. You heard me? <laughs> Come on, man. Like we all, I don't care about that, bro. That's not that's not bragging rights, bro. Like there are so many people like you can talk about and. By name, they're not household names. They don't make them less successful than household names. Mm. Like, it's like, what are we really trying to be the best at? Being yeah. known? Like, what am I being? Like, I, there, so there's no pressure. You gonna make the Orlando list? Yeah, there's no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna make, hey, if I work hard enough, five, five, maybe five, will I make the five, Orlando five, list? the brands in Orlando. Like, bro, I don't care about none of that, bro. It's like, what am I pressured to do? Yeah. But be the best of me I can be while Come I'm on, here. Man. Like, I don't care about... And like that's Exline Demo. Like he said, society's pressures. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't know about nobody else. Like, but I always have a thing. I always say, bro, I grew up popular. I didn't grow up. <laughs> <laughs> niggas, ain't, niggas ain't grow up missing none of the attention that we, like, like we weren't bullied. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't grow up missing no attention, bro. Like, yeah. like, I've never, like, never been, like, somebody. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I don't understand. Like you know, I don't. So I don't have the need to feel like I have to prove that I'm somebody. Or when participate somebody, in the rat race. Yeah, like, because I've already been. I've been somebody all my life. Like what are we talking about? Like yeah. this is nothing, bro. That starts with self. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean. Like light work. Like okay, I might not have much of this or much of that, but so what? It's not like I haven't had it before. I haven't been there before. I haven't did this before. It's like it's not a big deal. It's not a rush for me. It's like. Bro, I'm at my own pace. I'm just trying to be better, a be better, a better oh, me, man. bro. It's like I don't care about society's pressures, but that shit is dumb. Like who cares? Like nobody um, cares. I'm no, a, when you I'm die, bro, I promise you, when you die, nobody's gonna come to your funeral. Like that nigga died, but he had that paper. That nigga had some flyers, ball main shoes on when he got killed in that car accident, or or when they when they came and found him or whatever the fuck like nobody cares about that yeah. he had a lot of you instagram can't, you can't followers. take that shit with you you can't take none of it <laughs> with you bro go up there talk about your instagram followers or yeah. how many likes you got or how, how viral you bro nobody yeah. cares bro and nobody it's, cares it's like, about that one viral reel like nobody really cares about if you how how many designer clothes or whatever they care about how you made them feel yes nobody it's like it's not like in the end at the end of the day what are you really leaving behind how you, you made leaving, them feel? Are you leaving behind a bunch of materialistic things that people in your family gonna fight over, or are you leaving behind Kobe shit? Niggas, Kobe is mantras. Dead. Come on, niggas, Kobe is dead, and niggas was still outside talking about Kobe. Twenty four. Everything been about twenty four. Everything been about twenty four. Like a 
Because we trying to leave behind Kobe shit or we trying to leave behind Julio Fulio shit. Like, what we trying to leave behind? Yeah. Real shit. Like, it's like, That's what is you trying though. to leave behind, bro? That's facts. And, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the society pressures might pressure us to think that we need all these things to be great, but you don't, bro. You don't need none of it, man. You just need to work hard and be good yeah. and be great within yourself. Yeah, but... And it inspire others. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Everybody else, your work, when you done, when you, when it's all said and done, the work you do, and well, the people that you left behind is going to tell your story if you did it right. Cartel? Yeah, I second that. Like, listen, I always tell people when I'm in the room with this guy, you're going to catch me talking less and less, like, each time, because this nigga be reading my thoughts and articulating it verbally. <laughs> like, perfect. Like, and it's a tedious process because be bro, my brain be crazy, much. man. You we, know what I mean? But the homie be getting it. The homie be getting it. She, the homie be getting it in a nutshell and like giving it from a, a point of view that even sometimes I myself like might have t- been a tad bit selfish on. You know what I'm saying? Dog giving you the whole rundown. I can't. I second that because nigga, none of that shit matters. None of that shit like, matters. I've been out here working so hard, like doing what I'm doing, but to me, I ain't working hard. You know what I'm saying? This is the shit I love to do. We've been out here doing this shit so much, bro. So much of it every day. Our life consists of like everything. People look at me and say, oh, yeah, Dro doing this. You know what I'm saying? Whether you think it's big or not, you know what I mean? Appreciate you, but nigga, this is the shit we do every day. Don't right. nobody care about no pressures, man. You can't tell mm-hmm. me I'm supposed to be nowhere. No, no certain point in time, that. bro, because everybody got their own star. Everybody got their own destiny. You know what I mean? Everybody going their own path. So it's not like I'm like it's gonna know, hit when it hit. It's not like I'm fuck uh Bronny James or something like you know. <laughs> why, why him though? I'm just saying like he has a lot of pressure to be. Yeah. To be Bronny James. I don't James. think. I don't think. You don't so. think he's who's that little LeBron right? Yeah, little LeBron like he don't, they like. He don't care about that shit. Bro. I'm not saying he. But cares, that's a pressure but though. That's a pressure. societal, societal pressure, pressure though. Pre- yeah. Pressure pr- put on you though. Think about that's it though. That's a societal if pressure, bro. Think about yeah. it. People really expect him to be as great as his dad. Yeah. Instead of just being him great as himself. Yeah. Mm. Like he has to be great as his dad, or he's failed. Like what if he's just as great as himself? Yeah. Like he can't be <laughs> the great Bronny James. He got to be the great LeBron James Jr. Like what? Yeah. Is going I feel on? like I feel like with that situation, it don't matter. Who you is, if you have a, like, say for instance, like, Cartel's son grows up, they're going to expect him to be... Just as great. And just that's as not great. fair. You can just be as great as yourself. Yeah. And he, he going to know that, though. Ma going to know that, though, because I raised him, like, like what you like, what you want to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't care what daddy do. You know, this ain't that ain't your stilo. That's what's up. If one day you come to me and you kick the dopest 16 bars I done heard from a little nigga that's seven years old, and I'm we might... I have to rethink. Right. You know what what path you might be on. You know but what I'm if saying. You want to go out there to Africa but, to study lions? Yeah, and I'm with you. Like I'm a yeah. <laughs> roll with you you. want to be an archaeologist? Like you know, I'm with you. Yeah. I tell my daughter all the time because she be she make music too. She be uh, coming writing lyrics. You know, she be like, "Daddy, I'm a songwriter." You know, I got this and I got that song, and she'll let me hear it. She's even on one of the singles that's gonna be released in a couple of months. Uh, like in the near future, she's on one of the singles and she's a co-writer. That's lit. So, uh, like I told, her, I was like, yeah, if you if you sound like that on it, you can be on it. You know what I mean? But if not, we ain't gonna put no pressure on you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do, no you like it, I love guys. it. Don't don't pressure yourself and to feel like you have to keep up with the Kardashians because you don't. Yeah. Half of it, it's, Instagram is a fake place. It's not a real place. It's not a. Hey, look, I'm when that phone I'm go tell- dead, life, regular life is still here, it's man. You know what's so crazy? It's, it's not real. I just had a I just had an aha moment. I'm gonna tell y'all some real shit. Today, this shit happened to be today. After be more call me. You know, it just started pouring down rain in the day. Yeah. It was pouring down rain in the power when I feel like. What was called? The Saharian. The Saharian dust. The Saharian dust done done reached the lens. You wash your car all weekend. (laughs) Yeah, so it just started (laughs) raining like hard and the power went off. And I just kept cutting back on my ass about to watch SWAT. I was trying to watch SWAT. (laughs) And it just kept cutting off. So I started reading. And I'm like, damn, my Wi-Fi was working and my data, you know, that data be going away, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So I couldn't get on Instagram. Instagram. So I just started reading. I'm like, you see? It's took other, everything. Yeah. Everything got taken away. Now, everything got taken away from the universe me. just letting you know, bro, just nigga, relax. get it together. Yeah. No, hey, nigga, get it together. That's <laughs> how I'm I sat there. I was like, let me just sit here and read that. Because I kept telling myself this month I want to read. Yeah. Like I want to get back into the books and yeah. get in and start learning more and growing more. Right. Instead of, you know, 
scrolling through and doing all the stuff that I've been doing because a lot of people don't really understand, but I was posting every single day for like 60 days straight. I remember. Yeah, I, remember. I remember being one of the people who to call you and tell you. I call him like that. I that him you, week, yeah, you. that you I was you on my feed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, it, yeah, and so. it's a proven method, though. You got your La Russell on for show show. Yeah, you, you like, I remember being viewing that and thinking that that was super dope and super yeah, cool. It was, it, was, it's, it's, it was a tough road because it's like sometimes I wanted to get off that bit, but it came back to him where he was saying you got 15 opportunities for somebody to see you yeah. if you post every single day, five times a day. And That's I was exactly like, exactly what you did because every time I, I opened my Instagram app, there you was. Oh, y'all finna see y'all so soon. Just yeah. give me some time. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. And I'm finna be on that going crazy too, though, because like I want to, I want to match you for that. So if you're gonna go sixty, I wanna go sixty with you. X line, you need to go sixty too. We need to we need to all do we don't need Catch to Catch me in September. To I took a little month off. You took and a month off? Yeah. September could be the month. My kid about to be born anyways. I feel that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm Droville. Gonna I feel like Droville is one of the pillars in the city. Um, it left me like on a definitely high for a while. That's love. Especially like walking in, seeing the aesthetics. It just I I have it as a highlight on my Instagram. That's how of much of an impact it left on me because I ain't have to look left, I ain't have to look right. I mean, when you got on stage, I got stepped on, trampled on a little <laughs> bit, but you know what I'm saying. Other than that, we, we we had a great time, great vibe. So you coming up on another year. What does Drove look like this coming year? I mean, I definitely. I feel like there's a bar that's been set and I'm recognizing that me and my team knowing that, you know what I mean? We I feel like we want to definitely exceed expectations and go crazy. And go crazier than like even though even than we have. I have a couple big plans like I got some shit in the clutch. I've been slowly waiting on to come through, you know, different little situations that I'm trying to plug and play this go round that I feel like that's going to make the experience that much more different and unique to each uh, attendee, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to everybody who come, because I feel like everybody come because they get certain things from it, you know, just like you said. But uh, we definitely working on some ways, like, to make it even more crazy and exciting. Like, we definitely finna bring some old vibes, man, and we bringing crazy artists. We, we bringing some vibes. I feel like with that, it's just, it's like, I don't, I, I want to compare it to like a family reunion or a kickback or a cookout. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> like I just felt like, especially when when as it got as more as the time kept going, right, and right, right, it got right. closer towards the end. Like more people just started coming, and everybody was so inviting. Everybody recording, everybody, everybody networking, everybody, everybody staring at each other from the sections. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's and they go. <laughs> just regular people. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, that's why I don't go to the club. Fun fact, that's why, because I, I, I just. I just don't like the club out there. I like stuff like that because it just make me feel like I yeah. could be myself. It's just yeah. the club seems so. To me, I always say the strip club, the club, it, they're so transactional. There's like there's no genuineness about it. It's everything is so. Okay, y'all buying a bottle, right? Okay. If like, you're not get up. Yeah, if you're not. Excuse me, cause um yeah, all right. Like, I like know, the strip club sometimes. Yeah, because that's cause. I don't love them. That's that's yes. I'm not saying we don't, but I'm just saying it's trans it's transactional. Like you don't like being in those spaces so much because there's nothing genuine about it. They're so transactional. Come here, I pay her. She's gonna do what she's yeah, supposed it, to do like because every, I'm paying her to do it's it. Everything so it's transactional though, because at the end of the day, nobody really gives a fuck about you. Like you might find people every now and then that care about you. You know when you go to these places often, but. In the grand scheme of things, it's transactional. It's a big ass store, a big ass place to spend money yeah, at. Yeah, big ass place to spend money at. If you're not spending no money, nobody cares about you. So it's just like Droville is not like that. You don't have to go in there and spend money. We, we made Droville we'll for the community. You, we'll give you shots. We'll give you free weed. You don't. Know, <laughs> <damn>. <laughs> like, hey, look! If you got your medical card, hey, if you got your medical card, if you, hey. Nah, nah, that's love. If you have your medical card and I got, because I have mine, you know what I mean? And I'm standing up under the tree in the smoking area because we don't allow cigarette smoking like and all that smoke inside yeah. of there. So if you standing in the corner in the smoke area, bro, and I'm smoking beside you, like for sure, like you can have some yeah, of mine. It's, I'm it's sharing. Not I'm it's not sharing. Transactional. Yeah, that's my like, point. Droville is not transactional. It was built for the community you, to be able to course, come out. You know, if you want to, if you want to buy merch, you can. If you want to buy a shot, you can. But at the end of the day, you're going to have a 
great, great time. time. Yeah, just by vibing, just by pulling up, like you gonna see somebody you know. Yeah, and, you and know it's gonna saying? it's gonna we start gonna get something. We gonna we gonna yeah. we gonna make you feel comfortable. You're not gonna feel like you're you need approval point to us. Yeah, and you're gonna see me perform for an hour long, probably with on one band. You know what I mean? On stage with no background vocals. And just the instruments, like, and we're going to vibe, and we're going to make music, we're going to make fun, and we're going to make magic. Like, it's going to be lit. So how you think everybody can perceive Windows when they hear it live? Because I don't know, because you're very spontaneous when it comes to performing. So, Yo, he gonna I, mean, windows I mean, like, window. I'm definitely I know he's going to perform at Jova, but is that going to be the first time we hear it? No. No, I'm going. I'm performing on August 30th at, oh, at yeah, Mellow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Mellow. Yeah, and my man. apologies. You feel me? One time, one time for the boy, man. You feel sure. me? Uh, the anniversary coming up, and I'm definitely kicking hot shit at the anniversary. Like for me and the homies, really, it's for the community. Like I definitely love what bro doing for the community. You know, he's on the same type of vibe as you. Like, mm -hmm. and and what we all been trying to do. You know what I mean? Bring Orlando together and like find something to do because mm -hmm. all of us trying to do something for Orlando at this point. Mm -hmm. Everybody just calling it something different. You know what I'm saying? I like and, that. And 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 that's where the culture going. That's where the city going. That's how I answer that first question you asked me. I wasn't mm -hmm. really like on point back then, but you feel me? Like that's where the city going right there. It's going to that. So shout out Mello. I'm definitely finna give a nigga a little taste of Windows. At uh, the anniversary for show for show. So if you if you ain't heard, you need to hear it. August thirtieth. We going crazy. Legends Florida. You Legends, feel me? Legends right here. Legends Lounge Florida. We right here in Orlando. Going crazy with it, man. For Young Mellow events anniversary. I think it's like I don't know which one it is, but it's going crazy. And Dro Orlando gonna be in there. Festival. Yeah, Orlando only festival. Dro Pack gonna be in there, man. X Nine gonna be in there. My boy Nate gonna be in there. What Definitely we're all sure. thinking podcast gonna be out there, man. You feel me? Some bro, I even seen. I think I just seen a fly with D Boy on it, bro. I had just grabbed it and reposted it, like, bro, this shit legendary. Like me, I be looking at it like the old school hip hop pictures that be hanging in niggas' uncles' garages where the pool table be at. Mm -hmm. Like you know, with all the artists on that bit, like Rock Kim, Nas, like Jay Z. Beanie Siegel, like all the old school, like great niggas, Bob man. Marley, you know those pictures, like mm -hmm. niggas. So that's how I see our city, though. You know what I'm saying? I really see us like that. Like when niggas is out here in competition, I view us like that. So just for to see the, I seen a loose cannon take off. Poster had me jumping, like you feel me? I'm like, oh, but this shit finna be lit. All I know is like, you especially feel me? This like shit finna be lit. everybody dropping some hot shit, like. Come on, I, man. I gave Loose Cannon his flowers with that song all summer. Come I felt on. like real nigga. That song was real nigga, bro. Be going crazy. That's my nigga. Be yeah, going crazy, bro. Be going crazy. That's been my nigga. Been going crazy. Like, and I know, bro, from both aspects. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I know, bro, from the music, and I know, bro, like outside. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? We be outside together. That's my partner. So, yeah, big ups to the homie though, cause that that all summer shit going crazy, man. Definitely. And, there's a couple other artists on there, you feel me, that I'm super excited to see, be in the building with, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I'm a fan too. Like, I love sure. our city, bro. I'm fucked sure. up by us. And For I sure. feel like can't nobody fuck with us. For sure. I'm souped up on that, like. Yeah, ain't no drought. I'm souped up on that. Like, line that <laughs> shit up. Line that shit up, bro. I don't give a fuck where you from. Line that shit up. Ain't no drought. Like, I love it's us. Man. I love us. I'm a big X man, and, and and been that, <laughs> been that. My DC number was eight seven two six one nine. On everything, sure. on the set, nigga, big X man shit. Like, and I love us, bro. I love our city, bro. We gonna go so crazy. So you know, shit like this hype me up. This Orlando only fans, all this fly shit, like Orlando shit. Like, man, that shit hype me up, bro. Cause we so lit, we just can't see it. Cause nigga be wanna argue about everything. But it ain't really no argument, cause we so raw, bro. You know what I'm saying? That all we gotta do is just keep doing shit like this. And we'll forget the bullshit. We just got to make it through a bunch of these shit. You know what I'm saying? We got mm -hmm. to keep doing this and we'll forget the bullshit. All that shit will be water under the bridge. I don't know, man. I me personally, speaking from a standpoint of what I do and how I do it, I'm be honest, like. All that is fine and cute and dandy. Like I, <laughs> I love, I love our but we never gonna. I feel like, cause I know, I know when I say this, it's gonna be like I'm coming off for some way. But I don't be giving a fuck. Right. I just be feeling like sometimes, like yeah, it be it be it go. We feel good at certain times, and then it goes to a point where like everybody go back to hating on each other. Everybody go back to not liking. Everybody yeah, but I've never been in the conversations yeah, yeah, yeah. or in those rooms to where I was like biased. 
or or yeah, or know, hating on nobody else you know against so no other though? artists though. You know what's so crazy? I don't think it's the artists hating on each other. I think it's the people that don't even make music. Facts. Doing all the hating and and pitting people against each other. Yeah. Yes. The artists is not bro. These artists know each other. Yeah. Like I'm saying, they, talk, like, they, they don't. I don't see. I don't together. see artists like. I know that you know that, that old. You know what? That whole situation that happened with Glock Nine and them. That's the old situation, and and everybody's pretty much out of the picture. You know that was in them, them situations. So these this new era is like, bro. Nobody's hating on each other, bro. Yeah, like, I feel like everybody. I feel, I feel like people that's not even don't even make music hypes things up and makes people come outside their character or what they would rationally think because of the internet. <laughs> yeah. But in real life, these artists is not beefing with each other, bro. They making music. In real music life, bro, I'm pulling up at SOB looking for BB Draco and yeah, motherfucking they, B Raw them. Um, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Bo- pulling up jamming that shit with that shit playing. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm thinking my dog and them finna be out here. We fucking with each other. Yeah. On the bro. real. Like, <laughs> Tony Boy and Loose Cannon just dropped them. Yeah, mixtape. went crazy. Um, and them my dogs, both of them. No, Trap, both of them. Trap got boom on his his album. Man, Trap he just got went a crazy. With Trap, like you yeah, know what I'm yeah, like we working. Zion HKN Trinity froze be, on that bit. Zion Trinity be linking up and performing. Like Come who on. is what artist is like? Hey, Leak what? Baby, Leak Baby got two of the hardest motherfucking artists to ever come like, out the what, city right what? now. Name Busting them. shit. Like, like I be trying to the figure girl. out what they be talking about. People Zion be, and the nigga. Artists don't want to work. Don't want to work. Like, they like artists don't want to work together. Yeah. What artists don't want to work yeah. together? Where in what know. city? Where? Like, in what city? I don't see this. Because when we see each other, I'm I'm running into all these niggas that everybody talking about. Got, I ain't had no problem with nobody, nobody out here. You can't name an artist out this bit that could say, like, you know, they even had words with Dro. Like, it, or a producer, or a DJ, or a DJ. Now and he, that go for now, every last one of they ass, on, bro. Like, on. and we be out there with these now, niggas, bro. Now, now, I have heard, like, artists might feel slighted because they might say, hey, I wanted to work with this artist, but their price was this. And that's just part of the game. Yeah. Like, if you like feel that. slighted because somebody charged, they, they they say, you know what I'm saying, a, cer- a certain amount of money for their feature, that's on you because at the end of the day, you got to look at it from their perspective, like... Hey, bro, it be like that. I remember when I first was trying to pop my shit, bro, and then I had until takeoff, like, hey, bro, get on this one shit for me, bro. Whoop, whoop, and bro was like, hey, it costs this much money. I ain't have that. Yeah, I bro. honestly, I honestly ain't have it for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and not to say I wouldn't invest in my craft, you know what I'm saying? Because I've spent, like, numerous amounts of money, like, investing in my craft, but I didn't have however many bands it was right then, right then at that spot while I was big mouthing, like, yo, how much? da 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 you know what I'm saying? I wasn't ready for it. So I was just like, oh, y'all had to ease up off of it. But if you can't afford it, just don't let niggas know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that. Be yeah, yourself, be like you know that. It's okay. It and it's like, like you know, we, we i that's the that's the most I've heard. But as far as anything else, I don't think I think artists are working together. I think they're Definitely. doing as much as they can together. I and even like, if they ain't, we is. Over yeah, this like, motherfucker, call my phone, hit me up. Y'all already know how I'm sliding. You know how I'm coming. You know how I'm sliding. You know what's up with us. You know. feel me? On know. any any scene, any studio, I book, think whatever. Not, for, me it's, it'd be, for me, it'd be the more out, the outside people that don't make music. They'd be having so much. They be starring bullshit. Yeah, they be bro. starring so much, and it's they like, bro, if you take bullshit, yourself bro. out of it, you are gonna realize like that ain't even what's going on in reality. Like That's I say, why I don't even comment Instagram on it no is more. not a real place. I don't bro. even comment on it like, no more. It's not a real place. It's yeah. it's a fake it's fictitious. place. It's yeah. fictitious, bro. It's not real. <laughs> the book, like, the book is a book of fiction. It's not. It's on real, the fiction bro. side of the I library. I promise you, we see people outside all the time. We outside all the time. None of this stuff is really going on. It's not going on. I swear to God, man. Shout out Spook. That's my motherfucking nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out my nigga Spook out. Like, Cause he be talking that real shit, bro. Yeah, Listen, man. we see these guys everywhere, bro. And like, and I don't know who the fuck said the city was dry. Like, cause Listen, ain't nothing dry about the city. I'm not, I'm not gonna say nothing. Hold on, bro. Niggas is outside. Listen, niggas might say whatever they want on the internet. Whoever. All of them. But when people see other rappers, these rappers in person, they is giving them they, they flowers. Bro, you hard, bro. Keep going. Bro, I be I having all types of roses on me, I see boy. what you doing. It's fine. They going to wake up soon. I got all da- of this. I got dandelion juice like, all on my I elbow, boy. Place, I swear to God, they be giving me flowers, bro. I'm outside, my, bro. And I, I see put that what's on going set, on, bro. <laughs> like, in real that life, bro. Because out here giving, they giving rappers flowers, bro. How you a drought and you giving me flowers? How the flowers grow? Hey, look. 
if it wasn't nobody watering them. Come hey, on, look. bro. It don't make no so sense. So I put it on my set, though, bro. I swear to God, I'm a real 87 sense. baby. I'm from Enville, bro. Listen. Listen, man. I'd be outside with everybody's favorite DJ. I'm going to say this for the record, sir. I'd be outside with everybody's favorite DJ. They tell me nigga, going. consistency, my nigga. Listen, if you look closely at my artist profile for Google, bruh, like on my Facebook and all of that shit for my first music page ever, it's a picture of me and consistency when he didn't let them remove me from the stage at Rod Wave but shit. When really Rod Wave came through that bit and they kicked all the hood trap niggas off the stage, yeah. bruh. Everybody who had bread, they kicked everybody out them sections that was right there on the stage, bruh, when Wave came to Rum Jungle. And it was inconsistency was like, nah, Dro, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Woo, woo, stand right here, Dro. Over the DJ board, like on yeah, the wall, like, bruh, post real. right here, Dro. You feel me? So... It, it's cap and and when I really got to run down on bruh and holla at consistency later on, amongst all of the shots going back and forth between artists and DJs and talking about you know they don't support us and all of that, I don't feel like all of them. I understand Neither. the story of being the underdog artist that the DJ saying will spend some money. I understand being that person because I've been that person, but I done also been the person that went and hustled up like you say four hundred. I bet. DJ Pat, you say 200, 250? All right, bet, like, and double back and go get the bread and come back and pay them and see how it unfolds and how it comes out. Like, in a lot of the times, if you do what they saying, just, like, support them, they're going to support you. And if it sound good, a lot of the times, bro, they really breaking shit. It ain't no beef. Like, but it ain't, ain't no, no That's a different conversation, too, though, Joe, because sometimes, you, as an artist, you have to realize if you are a club artist. I don't think everybody I, ain't no club I artist. Think, and that's how I feel. I I'm feel not like, even a club artist. That's why like, we had to invent Drovid. I feel like a lot of what well, when they say drought, they mean there's no probably no artists in a club, local artists that's getting swinged in the clubs like that. Yeah. But that don't mean it's a drought. It just mean y'all just won't play their records. Yeah, because we still had 300 reason. people like, at, at Drovid. I ain't here to decide who what get played. That's not my business. I don't yeah. got no turntables. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, nobody, you're not playing it. Like, if you feel like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I don't feel like that. I do hit, but I mean, there's some. It's there's DJs who play because they definitely. Um, DK's definitely playing. Now nah, your consistency's always play local music. You know, um, there's a lot of DJs that play local music, but I don't think we don't have a boss man D Lo hit in the club. Like, no, nah. we, we don't have whoop fuck nigga. We don't have Tony Boy jigging and finessing right now in the club. Yeah, but so y'all gotta play it into that Ice Spice get the popping. I ain't gonna count you know that Ice Spice been so doing it's like, been booty so, shaking. So it's like because that's not a thing right now. It's like oh, there's nothing going, but there's a lot going, bro. There's a lot. And I like it. There's a lot going because Ice Spice booty shaking. So whoever said the city dry, you need to go play Ice Spice because me and Curb on that bit kicking fly shit. I ain't going well, to lie. He was talking shit yeah. on that bit. Shout out OG Curb, man. That boy said he seen somebody telling their mama and went, oh. Come on, man. <laughs> all right. Listen. All right. Picture being in the studio with him while he freestyles this off the top of his melon. Like, just picture this man. Like, I know this guy, and he's a songwriter for, like, big record labels like Atlantic and all type of other, like, big record labels, for real, for real. So, he behind the scenes on a lot of songwriting activity and really in those rooms. So, when me and bruh, he hit me like, man, drove him in the city. I'm, I'm up here, I'm about to, you know, I'm about Sanford or something. I'm about to work with this one nigga, and I'm about to buy, my, buy this chain. So, I'm like, all right, bet. I think somebody had stole, stole this that, chain that, on some that, random that, shit. Like, on, yeah, shot, and then they punted on some bum shit, and the pawn people, Call like... Them. Like, yeah, one of his fans that listened to his music mm -hmm. was in Sanford at a pawn shop and was like, bruh, hey, I just seen, hey, this your shit, bruh? Fam, it's right here in the pawn shop over here in Sanford, bruh. Come get it, bruh. It's right here. So he called him, get on the phone, set a meeting to come get it, and he hit me up because I had just been at Trap Bocce and uh, Lauderdale like a couple hours previous, like maybe like a half a day early. I was dying there just vibing, and uh, I let his I let his DJ hear it, Poppy Zoe. And Poppy, me and Poppy Zoe in the back of uh, Trap Bocce thugging, and we just vibing on waiting on my salmon sliders to come out, and he like, bro, this shit hot. Like, this bitch. I'm like, bro, you know who would kill that bitch because i had sent it to baby j off rip at first first i sent it to tyler yahweh i made i freestyled it and was with tyler yahweh back and forth from when i was first making it you know what i'm saying and he was like bro that shit fire cuz do the highs on that bitch keep them bitches as the hook that shit fire you know what i'm saying and he was like i get on that bitch so it's supposed to be me and yahweh yahweh ain't never get to get on there you know what i'm saying cubby business for whoop, whoop. fast forward i sent it to baby j from miami yeah, mm -hmm. I sent it to Baby J. And okay. that's my nigga. I fuck with Baby J. He I one of the realest industry, like, because he's in the industry. Bro, got a real deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, he one of my 
personal like top favorite partners you know what i'm saying that's mm-hmm. fucking with uh affiliated with uh real deal industry for real for real because he really put me on like and brought me behind the scenes let me meet slip and slide a r's all type of fly shit anytime it's a listening session party meet up labels here we out there meet him hot boy rico cartel <clears throat> we squad deep like at events you feel me and bro put me on like hey dro come out here you know what i'm saying like hit my phone ahead of time like dro you need to he was the one making me, he, <laughs> hey, Baby J, excuse me, Baby J, he the nigga who hit me up and told me we had a we had a heart to heart, bro, like a couple months back. He like, hey, Drew, I be seeing you. He like, bro, you really got a following, bro. Like, people fuck with you, bro. Like, and you a real nigga. Your music be snapping like, bro, why you be posting all these other niggas and all this other shit on your page, bro? Bitch want to hear some music from your ass, bro. Like, why you ain't dropping, bro? Like, why you ain't taking this music shit serious? He literally hit me up and came at me like that. Like, bro, why you ain't... What's up with you? Like, you know what I'm saying? And I had to explain myself to this man. And my explanation wasn't good enough for me or him. <laughs> so here we is later on, you know what I'm saying? And I hope, you know, yeah, that was that... Yeah, here we is. And I hope that project, like, you know, is not only just successful in my eyes, that I hope my partner in, enjoy it as much as I did, because, as I did making it, because he was one of the niggas who had me feeling like, oh, yeah? Did this nigga just tell me I'm playing? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of these. My nigga. You know what I'm You feel me? So I'm going to go in the back. I'm going to check the receipt. I'm going to see if they got some hot sauce in the mouth. So, <laughs> now I'm just fucking with you. But look, he really made me think about shit. So I appreciate Baby J. You feel me? So I sent it to Baby J. He probably was busy. You know, my boy, he be over there doing his thug thugs. And my boy be going crazy already recording like a bat out of hell. That nigga record so much, bro. And be in the studio and be on that music shit. He be everywhere. So I'm like, he ain't get back to me. And and then Curb got back to me that next day. And he really came up here, got his chain back, bro, and slid straight to the studio, bro. He took a nap first. I ain't going to lie. He took a nap first. He took, he took, and my boy went to Jairo's. Hey, he did. He said, drove and take a nap. You know, we pull up for your ass because you about 40 minutes away. Swear to God, the man came to the studio and freestyled that shit off the top of his dome. Like, and we sat in on some songwriting shit, bro, and really just... Talked about what made the song better, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I got to chant different shit to him, and he got to chant shit back at me, and we, you know what I'm saying? We sat there, like, and the man off the top of his dome just, like, brought that vibe, that energy. And I was like, this who the fuck I was waiting on. Right. Mm. Like, this, this, I might have got my first little jam with bruh you could bruh go crazy on that bitch. He did. And I don't say that about everybody. I ain't gonna lie. I done been on the song with plenty of people. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't go crazy. On every song, so so shout out Kurt. That my question to y'all is because y'all, I want I want this to be on camera because mm-hmm. I've been meaning to ask y'all this, but y'all are like one of the y'all part of the committee. So the committee, the committee, the, oh, committee. the, committee. Mm-hmm. the committee. committee. So how's y'all? How's y'all? How do y'all feel about the SOB experience? And do y'all think it should come back in twenty twenty five? I definitely feel like it should come back in 2025. I don't feel like that's a question. I told you that on stage one time, too. I don't know if you remember this part of my answer. But uh, definitely should come back in 2025. Uh, I loved the experience of SOB. I like what it stands for. I like what I like what it bring out of the city. I like the fact that it ain't a bunch of famous ass, like, think they somebody niggas on stage. And it also... It ain't giving showcase vibes. You got a lot of people on there. I ain't gonna lie. That last time was a lot of people. I'll never go at the end again. <laughs> it was a lot of people. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. But I like what it do for the city, bro. Like I like the camaraderie sense. Of, right, right, right. You know, right. cause I'm I read the big payback, uh, like the book about hip hop, which is like bigger than the Bible. It's huge. You know what I mean? And it mm-hmm. had everybody's story, in it, including like Run, like Rev Run, and and, and uh. Him and what's the guy named who signed Metallica, Rick Rubin. It had their stories, like from the college dormitory days, and like how they put that shit together, you know, on some real hip hop. Everybody in here on the mic with the chord vibe. And it gave me that real hip hop vibe, like a double XL freshman freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of vibe it breeds to me. Like, niggas in a brick building, like real hip hop, classic shit. That's what SOB mean for me. I feel that. I like SOB. You know, I like SOB. Um, should you bring it back at 2025? 20, if it makes sense for you, honestly, like, you know, 
I'm big on business. So if, if it don't make no business sense, then it is what it is. Like, you know, if it makes sense for you. Because that's a, at the end of the day, this is... This but you is made it. sense, right? You made bread. No, it ain't, I'm not saying like it's just not bread. Really bread. It's not about the bread. I'm just saying like it is it make business sense for you or what your goal is, what you're trying to do. What you're trying to push. Like in. what you're trying to push your brand to be. Like does it make sense? You know what I'm saying? And it was good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. But I'm coming from a consumer standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, you, I could do something that everybody might think was dope. But from, from, from my business standpoint, it might not be no good for what I'm trying to do. Yeah. You sure. know what I'm saying? That's so. Real. So, like, it just all depends on how how it affects you and what you're trying to do. Because I'm just a consumer that just bought a ticket and it's just in the building. Like, but on the back end, it might not make no business sense for you. And what are you trying to do? And what you're trying to accomplish. So, Tell us. Tell us what you're trying to do. To be continued. Because <laughs> you know I feel like everybody everybody been asking me about it. And I'm just, I'm in a different realm right now. And now, and now, right, I, right. this it's next one, space. yeah, this next one is gonna be different. All right. It ain't gonna be the same. And I feel like I laid out a blueprint. Everybody trying to compare to. You did. And now it's like I gotta create another blueprint, cause I, I you want to create a bigger blueprint. Yeah, cause I want this to win. Shout out to my boy Draco. I want this to be my best work. I want this to be some real. Vibe. So I'm gonna let everybody do their thing. I'm gonna be a student of the game and go from there. So anything else y'all wanna say to the people before we get out of here? You got any more questions before I get off this mic? <laughs> Windows Saga Two out right now. We going crazy. Uh and we got the NFC keychains, man. Uh I'm gonna do the pre order on my website, loudroworld.com, and y'all gonna be able to grab those. They'll be ready in like two weeks. Keychains. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, it's just like a little NFC tag, a little mini keychain. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Just boop beep to your phone, and it and it give you the whole EPK and everything. Oh, like, you feel me? that's it's basically like giving you my demo in 2024. Oh, that's like yo, check my demo out, son. Make yeah. sure you check out A side and B side, son. Yeah, yeah. Drug nigga. Yeah, you know. Um, shout out to all the artists in the city. Keep working. Keep doing you. Um. And hit us up, cause we working and we ain't know none of that fuck shit. When you and dropping some more clothes? October probably. I had some at um August on August thirtieth at uh, Orlando Only Festival. I have a little something, but my main collection is will be out in October. For sure, I'm gonna be wearing it at Orlando Only Festival. Too. Hopefully, I get the uh, exclusive like Joe, but I don't know. <laughs> and, and we can walk in as a unit with it on. We known for doing it. Hey, you know let's do it. Yeah. But yeah, man, y'all like, come subscribe. We out. Peace. Hey, what's that? Turn it up.